Well, hello there. Welcome to the Midweek Refill. I'm your host, Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, and I'm always excited to share these teachings with you. We have been in what I feel to be a really great series on love and really learning from the two greatest commandments that Jesus pointed out about loving God with all of our heart, soul, and mind and loving our neighbor as ourself. Well, I want you to make sure that you hit the like, share, subscribe button, and by all means, uh, please grab the PDF handout, the ebook that goes along with this teaching. I think it's going to bless you as you delve deeper in your personal study time and learn even more about the love of God. It's filled, of course, with questions and for opportunities for you to read and to just have a little bit more research than I have time to provide in these short and quick videos. My goal is to whet your appetite so that you will grow more and more deeper, deeper daily as you study through this course with me. Well, today we're going to jump into part number four. And last week we talked about God's love for us. This week we're going to be talking about our love for God. And I'm going to share with you some very practical ways that you can actually display your love for God on a daily basis. So let's jump in. Today we're going to go to the Old Testament and look at Deuteronomy chapter number 10, verse number 12 and 13. And it reads like this. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. This is an amazing passage of scripture. Deuteronomy, of course, is the final book of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These words were penned by Moses before God took him off the scene and Joshua becomes his successor. In this passage, the children of Israel, which represents the modern day church or the Christian church, if you will, was asked a question about what it is that God expects of them. We can personalize Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 13 by really looking at this passage and asking the question, what does God expect or require of me personally? So I want you to take this week very, very personally and apply it to your own life and your walk with God. Well, the answer is clearly before us. What does God require? What does God want from us? Well, the first answer comes after the third comma. God wants us to fear him. Now, when we talk about fear, we're not talking about spooky ghost or scary movie or Chucky or Jaws or something like that. We're not talking about Medea's boo here. <laughs> When we talk about fear in the Old Testament perspective, as it relates to God, it has to do with revere. It has to do with to reverence, to honor, to respect, to regard highly, to esteem very highly. And so when we're talking about fearing the Lord, it means to regard the Lord with high esteem, to revere the Lord, to put the Lord at the top plateau in your life. That's what God wants from you and from me. He wants to be first in your life, not among the first, but first in your life. But not only does God want to be first in your life, God wants us to walk in his ways. That means to follow the patterns and the paths that he has provided for us in scripture. God wants us to actually obey and do what he says. And then God wants us to love him. And of course, when we talk about loving God, in our last episode, we talked about how much God loved us, that before we were ever even born, God sent Jesus to die for us, and how God displayed his love for humanity by sending Christ to pay the price for our sins. Well, what does God want in return for that? God wants to be loved back by us, his creation. So God wants us to 
revere him, put him on the top plateau of our lives. He wants us to do what he said to do, and he wants us to love him. But then he goes on to say, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and uh, to keep his commandments. So we are to serve the Lord. That means to literally every day we should be working for the Lord. Now watch this. We do not work to be saved. That's an erroneous teaching. We work for God on a daily basis because we have been saved. It is our gratuity back to God for all that he has done for us. So serving the Lord can be done in a myriad of ways, whether that is giving financially or sharing the love of God with others, sharing a meal with someone, blessing someone who may be less fortunate than you. So serving the Lord is a part of our requirement and responsibility on a daily basis. And we must do it with the entirety of our heart and we must do it with the entirety of our soul. <clears throat> when we talk about heart and soul in the Old Testament, the heart represents the mind. It represents the place of intellect. It, me it represents the, the meditational part of us. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, that means my mind, my thoughts, all of that, I want it to be acceptable in God's sight. When we talk about the soul, it's the eternal part of mankind. It's that part of us that continues after breath leaves the human body. So what Moses is saying here is that we have to love God with entirety of our mind and with the entirety of our being. So to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which is another way of saying doing what God says, and then it ends with a question mark, which I command thee this day for thy good. So Moses in Deuteronomy is giving the law to a new generation who had grown up while others had died. And, and Deuteronomy is literally deutero means to in Hebrew. It is the second giving of the law. So Moses, before he leaves the scene, is giving the word of God instructions for life to a new generation of, of Israelites who had not been exposed to it because many of them had died off. So as you think about this passage, I want you to personalize it. What does God want from me? The Lord wants me to fear him or revere him, reverence him, put him on the top shelf of my life. The Lord wants me to walk in all of his ways. The Lord wants me to love him. The Lord wants me to serve him with all of my heart and soul. The Lord wants me to keep his commandments. The Lord wants me to keep his statutes. The Lord wants me to do this with my daily life. Powerful passage of scripture. I want you again to apply that to your very life. You know, of course, now we know that God loves us. And how do we know this? Through his words. And not only through his words, which were written before we were born, but through his actions which took place before we were born. That's how we know. You know, if a husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend is always talking about, I love you, you're my boo thing, you're the best thing that ever happened to me, and never, ever, ever do anything nice for them or never treat them nicely, I would question that kind of love. But God has already proven his love for you and me through his words and his actions. And he did it before we were ever even born. That's the powerful part about it to me. So in like manner, in similar fashion, we can show our love to God through our words and our actions. You know, when you think about our words, it's not just praise at church. You may not get to church. Uh, there may be something that comes up that you don't that you don't go to the physical building. But your words while you're alone can honor God. Your words with your friends, are they profane? Are they lewd? Or do they become words and phrases that truly honor God? Your actions toward other people, the love that you display toward others, ladies and gentlemen, that is a way that you can indeed express your love for God through your words and through your actions. You see, we can speak our love for God 
through prayer as well, through our worship. And again, don't wait until you get into a sanctuary to worship. You can worship in your car, in your home, in your bedroom, in your bathroom, wherever you may be, because wherever you are, God is. But also sharing the truth of the word with other people, sharing this Bible study, sharing the PDF, sharing the ebook, sharing a link to this video is sharing the truth of God's word. You know, everybody's not a preacher and all of that, but you can minister without being a preacher. So we can put our love for God in action also by obeying him, doing exactly what he says the way that he says to do it. You see, God's word is very clear. He wants us to walk in his ways because God knows our love for him will not be perfect as his love is for us. Maybe that's why he gave us a repeat of his word, 66 entire books, 1,189 chapters that we can constantly be reminded of our imperfection, but what God expects of us in spite of our imperfection. So I want you to think about this week, personalize the Deuteronomy passage, and as we prepare to pray, I want you to remember that as we shared last week, God loves you, but you have a responsibility to love him. And you express your love for God through your words, your ways, and your actions. So think about this this week as you go through the assignments that are attached to this particular section of our teaching. Now, as always, I want to lead you in a special prayer, and I want you to repeat it after me or with me. Gracious Father, your love for me is evident through your words and your actions. I want to declare my love for you right here and right now. I know that I just can't say that I love you. I need to show you that I love you through my actions. I am not capable of following your commands perfectly. Thank you that your love is enough. Amen and amen. Hey, I really enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope you got something out of it. If you didn't, you will when you go to that PDF. I look forward to sharing with you in our next week's episode, part five, our love for other people. God bless you. Go love somebody.